I hate to say it, Alex. Gritty Dick might be a bust. Woo. Welcome back to Raptors NBA podcast. Thank you for rejoining us or joining us for the first time. I'm Andy Redding and my co-host Alex Drobin on the line. The Raptors home opener is in the books. We were at it. Alex, how was your experience? I got to say, it was not as crazy as I thought it was going to be. There was no Jurassic Park feel. It seemed a little bit less exciting than in previous years. You know, last time we were on the podcast, I talked about how the city was kind of buzzing with excitement about this team starting. And then yesterday, it really didn't seem that way. I don't know what was happening. When we came inside the stadium, it felt a little bit better. Um, But outside, it wasn't the best. You ran into Grady Dick's parents if you I want did, to mention what I happened did there. run into Grady Dick's parents yeah I was waiting for you outside we meet up in front of real sports before we go in and who do I see walk beside me this tall middle-aged woman wearing a fresh Grady Dick jersey and I'm like this seems a little a little off so I do some investigating Grady Dick's parents out there and it was actually quite cute they're going to their son's first ever game uh, they're handing out Grady Dick uh, cutout faces. heads, yeah, faces uh, outside. So the dad was like, made sure to go get one, and you could tell they were just like over the moon. It was probably one of the best moments in their lives. How tall yes. were they? How tall were they? So the dad, fun fact, I think he's a short king. <laughs> he's no way, taller than the wife. Oh yeah, yeah, short king. Yeah, he's a short king. That's the first thing I noticed. So I was coming into Union Station and they were already giving out Grady Dick face cutouts in Union Station. So I was like, what is happening right now? And everybody seemed to have one. But yeah, I don't know. Other than that, it seemed like it was a little bit less exciting down there. We came inside. It was a little bit better. We moved our season tickets. We moved them a little bit lower into the middle of the arena. And the vibes were pretty strong. We met a bunch of season ticket holders beside us. They seemed to be very knowledgeable. So it's always good to sit beside people that actually know basketball and not people that are just coming as one-offs or coming on dates or whatever that don't actually know basketball. So that was good. I don't know. What did you think? What did you think of the yeah. atmosphere? We're now in section 309. It's a strong section. Strong. Strong section. 310. Sorry, I lied. 310. I so lied. is, this our, is this our eighth year or ninth year with season tickets? Can we get this? Can we straighten this out? <laughs> we got them... The first year we got them, we got the playoff tickets first, and the Raptors got swept by the Wizards. By the Wizards. John Wall. John Wall ate our food. Fastest man alive. Fastest man alive that year. And then we had the season tickets for the next year. So <laughs> that's eight or nine years. Yeah. Okay. Let's just say nine years. No, but we have to. Okay. We'll lock it down later on. Okay. We have to really figure it out. But if it's if it's the playoffs, let's say eight years. Sure. It's sure. eight years. Right. Everyone, everyone really cares about this. <laughs> no, no. Okay. Anyways, whatever. It doesn't matter. I just, I wanted to get straight straightened it out. So today here's what we have for the viewers and the listeners. We are going to do three takes, three takeaways from the game. And then we're going to say something about the league that we noticed yesterday as well, or in the last couple of days since the season started. So I'm going to start Dennis Schroeder, big game, big point guard, big point guard mm. change 22 Seven, only two turnovers. Oh, assist to turnover ratio 3.5. Is he a better fit with the Raptors than Fred Van Vliet? I'm going to say yes. The guy was coming off screens, dishing dimes, dropping it off to our boy Jakob, hitting shots. Dennis Schroeder's a great, I think he's a great replacement for Fred, Fred Van Vliet. I think that's a huge W on the uh, Raptors front office for that one. What are your thoughts? So I'm, eating my foot a little bit here because in our preseason preview podcast, I was not very bullish on Dennis. I thought he had a little too much hype from his summer performance. He kind of bounced around the league a lot, but one game in, I appear to be very, very wrong. He was a dog. Pat Bev says the Raptors don't have dogs. The Raptors have a dog in Dennis Shooter. He was, He's, He's even making shots. I've always <laughs> critiqued his shot making. Last night I was yelling out whenever he'd have an open three to not shoot, and he made shots. He was four for eight from three. That's great shooting. If you can keep that up, that really lifts the potential for this team. Do you Absolutely. Think, 
did you miss do you miss Fred Penfleet at all? Look, I miss him because obviously, you know, he grew up here. I love him as as a player. But honestly, like I think it's such a great transition over to this new sort of era of Raptors basketball. And yeah, Dennis Schroeder is a little bit older, but coming off of that summer, I feel like he has, you know, so much confidence that he is doing everything. Like I said, 22 points, four for eight from three, three boards, seven assists, zero steals. Like he was amazing, but moving on to the backup point guard situation, Malachi Flynn, we talked about this, Mm -hmm. didn't have a very good game. He seemed like it was okay to me. And then you broke down the stats to me while before we started this podcast and it didn't look good. Three points, three points. What are your thoughts on Malachi Flynn? Malachi Flynn. I, I was optimistic on him. There's a lot, this team, this first game was mind blowing it for numerous things. One, I thought Malachi Flynn was going to be a solid contributor this year. I thought the new coach Darka would coach him up new systems. I thought this was his chance to take over. Uh, and he did was, you know? I feel like well, you said this might be. I feel, I, I feel like you said this might be his last year in the league. Well, that too. We, it was his. It was his chance. <laughs> I mean, you've said a couple of different things, but uh, but yeah, he was awful. He was the worst player on the court. Plus, minus is a funky stat, but the Raptors were minus fourteen with Flynn on the court. That's bad. Like mm-hmm. you win a game, most guys, if not everyone, should be in the plus. You're minus fourteen. Yeah, he might. I don't even know if he's playable. Here's the thing. Okay, let's not let's not get crazy here, whether he's playable or not. But he only played ten minutes. One thing. One thing that I'll say is that Minnesota's a big team. They're a big, long, strong team, and he doesn't do well against a team like that with two really big guys in the middle who block shots. So, like, maybe that heart had something to do with it. In the preseason, he had a you know his plus minus was a little bit better than that, but. I understand what you're saying. Maybe he's just a little too small. I hate to say it. I hate to say it, but maybe that's what it is. And then going back to what we were talking about in the stands yesterday, I know you didn't like this take. What? And I know Grady Dick was like the fifth person off the bench, which, by the way, we should touch on. We but still have other takeaways, my friend. Let's not, okay. let's not dabble into it yet. What about why can't Grady Dick be a backup point guard to Dennis Schroeder? He doesn't why have not? a handle. He has the handle. He's a he shooter. Has, he, he is. Has the handle. He is. He's a shooter. I, I feel like he's not getting enough respect for his handle. His handle's fine. I'm just saying, why can't he be like an Austin Reeves type of backup point guard or whatever starting point guard or, you know, keep them both out on, on the backcourt? Having said that, he did. He was the fifth off the bench. So I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, I'm just throwing that out there. You don't like it. Anybody's watching or listening to this, let us know what you think about that. Could Grady Dick be a backup point guard for this team? Could he be? Okay, anyways, <laughs> let's move on. What he is your first pass enough? Uh, what is your first take? Go ahead. What's well, well, I'll rearrange my takes to make it uh simpatico with yours. My first take is Grady Dick. A wholesome moment to start. His parents there, beautiful thing. Everyone's excited. There were a few jerseys around. Toronto fans, good supporters, but Grady Dick. Only got two minutes last night. The man didn't get a basket. What? Is he... He was also fifth off the bench. Is he... A bust? So... Yeah. That's that's aggressive. So listen. <laughs> he got the, the, the least amount of playing time on the team last night. So, yeah, like you said, two minutes. After him, it was Malachi Flynn who got 10... Jalen McDaniel, 16. I don't know. Maybe he's not ready. One thing we did notice about him, even during the summer league and in the preseason, was that he's a little bit small, like in terms of weight. You know, he's not, I don't know if he's strong enough just yet. Maybe Darko just doesn't trust him. I don't know. But if you think about our rotation, we have a very deep team, right? Who was first off the bench? First off the bench. Sorry? It was McDaniel's. No, Gary Tran Jr. I'm oh, sorry, Gary Tran Jr. My bad. Yeah, so yeah. Gary Tran Jr. First off the bench, Precious Precious came second off the bench. Really good. Um, Jalen McDaniel's like they all three of those guys. Well, all two of those those two guys play the same position as Grady Dick, technically, right? So he has to beat them in practice in order to win 
that whatever, that sixth man or the seventh man or whatever, first or second off the bench. He's just not – he's not as good as those two guys just yet. He's not better than Gary Trent Jr., not better than Jalen McDaniels. Absolutely not. So maybe he's just stuck on a team where we're a little bit too deep for him to be getting minutes. But wasn't the argument this summer when the Raptors drafted him that he's just a pluck-and-play guy? You can put him in because he's a shooter. He's a hired gun. He can start playing immediately. Well, he's not a hired gun because we drafted him. A hired he's a drafted gun. gun. If we, he's a drafted gun. He's a drafted gun. No, I get it. I understand. But it's just, I think, like, that's the only thing I can see that would and make what, any sense at all. What is the Raptors' arguably biggest area of weakness? Shooting. They got a shooter. They got a drafted gun. And he doesn't play. Barely plays. They, they got a drafted gun. I like that. Um, how if, old? Are you concerned? I'm not concerned. I think he needs to play into play into the rotation. So Jalen McDaniels, he's 25, for example. Gary Trent Jr. feels like he's been on this team for a few years now. He's 24, right? Like these dudes are young. So when you bring someone like Grady Dick into you know into a situation like this, he needs to beat them out. I don't know. That's the only thing I can think of. You're right. Two minutes. Like maybe they should have given him a bit more time. He had one assist. No points. One assist, baby. Did not attempt a triple. Did not attempt a shot. No. No, he didn't attempt one shot. Never mind. No triples attempted. Concerning. Cause for concern. Andy's Cause concerned. for concern. Okay, let's move on. By yeah. the way, for anybody listening or watching, thank you so much. If you don't mind subscribing, listen to the podcast on Spotify as well. We're everywhere. Let us know what you think. Really appreciate it. Had to had to plug that in there. And I also, love. the other thing we're going to do is be a little bit more. We're going to try to stick to topics a little bit more. And we're going to try to move off of certain topics a little bit quicker. So moving on, what is so your next take? Or do you want me to do it? It's my takeaway now, right? Yeah. Okay. Next takeaway I have for you, Big Andy, mm-hmm. is Jakob Pertl is going to make the biggest difference for our team this season. We have some similar takeaways. Okay. <laughs> Let me, let's, let's talk about it. Let's talk about yeah. it. Yesterday when we were watching the game, we were watching him versus Gobert, and Andy asks me, "Would you rather have Yakaperta or or Gobert on your team?" And I said, at first, I was like, "Gobert probably from a defensive standpoint." But then, when you think about Yaka, but the, you know, his intensity, how hard he goes, how hard he plays, he's a smart player. He, he goes hard. So hard. Offensively, he's a little bit better than Gobert, almost. I would say. Yeah. Oh yeah. He's a better fit, I think. I love Jakob on this team. Jakob 2.0 is an absolute W, another W for the Raptors front office. What are your thoughts? We're agreeing on this one. It's nice. They went out, they traded for him, gave away draft capital. Looked a little weird last year because he could have left in free agency. But they wanted this guy, they got him, and he's paying off. Uh, I love watching him rebound. He just gets like hands in there all the time. Tipping balls. Just gets hands on balls all the time. Hands on balls. Hands on balls. Hands on Hands balls. On balls. Uh, <laughs> yes. Hands on balls. Yeah, he's fantastic. And he's, uh, he's strong. He's a lot stronger than you think. He is the Polish hammer. No, he's not Polish. He's the, what is he? He's Austrian German. hammer. Austrian, yeah, Austrian. They call him the Austrian hammer, which is In which is a bit odd because Marcin Gortat was the Polish hammer for a long time. And then the annou- our announcer just basically introduced him as the Austrian hammer, which, like, I don't know if you're allowed to just steal names yeah. other than Dwight Howard on Shaq, which I still don't think he he did properly, the Superman thing. Okay, mm-hmm. he had, what did he have? He had 20, he played 24 minutes, seven points, 11 boards. So, like, in 24 minutes. Yeah, he didn't play that much. He was, there's 24 a, minutes, 11 rebounds. Remember there's a large part of the game where we, like, does he have... Why is he not in the game? Does he have like four fouls and well, like what's going on? But we thought he was injured or something. But again, man, it just goes to show how deep we are. It's true. Deeper than you realize. Yeah. Uh, and like one thing, one thing I noticed was that when he was off the court, Pascal cat was just eating Pascal's food. Yeah. Cat was a problem when Pascal guarded him one-on-one in the post, obviously. And uh, when Jakob wasn't around, he was just getting whatever buckets he wanted. But yeah, Jakob Perto, man, amazing pickup. Just a little side note for the viewers and the listeners. We ran into Jakob. We didn't say hi to him or anything. We didn't want to bother him. But we ran into him at a ping pong 
uh, lounge downtown Toronto. It was called Spin. And he was just like a regular guy with like a few a few of his friends just playing ping pong, having a great time. Really nice guy, down to earth. That made me like him so much more. Just regular friends. It wasn't like baller friends. Just like playing. just regular, you know, five foot eight five to six foot people, as yeah. opposed to him, which is seven one. You know, I think he's wearing sweatpants. It wasn't he was on King West on like a Friday or Saturday night? He's not dressed up. I don't. I don't even think he was like drinking or anything. He was just hanging out. I don't yeah. know. Nice guy, stand-up guy. I'm cheering for him. Let's go. All right. My next takeaway. Go ahead. Very similar to yours. It's about Jakob, but there's a different angle here. Yesterday, before the game, Jakob got on the microphone, talked to all 19,800 people at Scotiabank Arena, welcomed us, thanked us for being fans, which made me think. At first, I was like, this is kind of weird that he's doing this. He's Barely been here for half a year since the trade. But is he the leader of this team? Shouldn't that be Pascal or Scotty saying these words? I mean, no. I don't <laughs> think he's the leader of this team. You don't I think do so? Think, no, I think that Scotty took that position already. And I think you can tell when he's in huddles, he's screaming all the time. He's really helping out his teammates anytime like anytime something happens Scotty's the first one in there I think Scotty's already the leader of the team but I really appreciate and respect that Jakob came out and did that we actually had a video we posted a video of that and people were loving it because yeah like whatever Jakob 2.0 Pascal really should be the leader yes. of the team Pascal or OG but both of them seem like they're a little bit um a little bit lower key I don't know but Jakob does as well. I think Scott is already the team leader, but I really did appreciate that from, from Jakob. Strong and take. Jakob's got the bag. He's going to be here for a while. He's got the bag. All right. Moving on. Moving on. Take three. Take three. Scotty Barnes. I said it before, and I'll say it again. Eastern Conference All-Star 2023-2024. He was amazing. And... He affected the game in different ways. It's not just it does you know it didn't just come up on the stat sheet, but it seemed like he was everywhere. You know, I have a few videos on my phone that I just was taking randomly last night and honestly, Scotty was just rotating faster than any player. He was getting his hands on a lot of random balls, grabbing boards, playing really good defense. His line wasn't bad. Like his line was good. He had 17 points, 8 boards, 5 assists. Two steals and five blocks, Andy. You had five. I don't know. It was that many. Five Come on. Blocks. Come on. 17 points, eight boards, five assists, two steals, five blocks. The man was everywhere. He's a dog. Honestly, I'm so for I, th- I feel like we should be so fortunate to have. We're so fortunate to have Scotty on the team. And <laughs> honestly, I think like if he doesn't make the all-star team, I'll be a little bit surprised. I might, I might have to make that bet. You're sticking to it. Thoughts? Not too many guys average 16 points a year and make an all-star team. He's got to get more points to make an all-star Look team. Look at his all-around numbers. 17, 8, 5, 2, 5. Who gets five blocks? Come on. That's crazy. I'm just saying practically he probably needs to make have 20 points a game to make an all-star team. For people who don't watch the Raptors to vote for him. Probably, yeah. Like... Like People I said, are, it seems it seems like when he's you know when you're actually watching the whole game, you're when you're, when you're watching him, there's a lot of stuff that don't doesn't come up on the stat sheet that he does, but that's still a really good line if you look at it. Oh, fantastic line! And he didn't shoot that well. Yeah, he'll shoot better. Maybe maybe he'll sneak up to twenty. Could he get twenty points a game this year? I don't know if he can. I don't think. I, I think he'll be in the high teens, but um, the rest of his numbers will be great as well. All right, what's your next take? My next take, we've talked about all these guys who played last night. Let's talk about the guys who did not play. My take is Chris Boucher is completely out of the rotation. He had a DNP. He did not play a second. This is a guy who was starting games for the Raptors for the past few years or first one off the bench. He's not in Darko's rotation. Is he... Is he doomed? Is he is he done? Is he cooked? That's a really good question. I'm not sure why didn't he didn't have any any minutes. No I would think I would think it's because 
Their team is so big. Once again, like going back to the size, just the sheer size of Rudy Gobert and Cat, like those are huge dudes in the lane. Chris Boucher would get manhandled by those guys. He just would, you know? So maybe that's why he didn't bring them in. I thought it was a bit odd that Precious didn't play D on Cat, you know, more than more than he did. Mm-hmm. Um, and that Pascal was on Cat for the majority of the game. But like, I don't know. I think he's a bit he's a bit too small. He'll definitely get burned this this year. I just may, maybe not against teams that have two seven foot centers, you know. Also, other guys not getting any burn. The old the old dudes, Thad Young, Garrett Temple, Otto Porter Jr., all DMPs. Well, those guys, I feel like we brought them in mostly for the veteran leadership. Otto Porter Jr., like Garrett Temple, like those. I don't think we're expecting much from Garrett Temple and Otto Porter Jr. and Thad Young. You know, if maybe there's an injury down the line, maybe that's a different situation. But I think that those guys are just there, you know, for, yeah, just for their experience. You know, it's not like. I'm not expecting Thad Young to go out there and drop 17 and 10. Same thing with Otto Porter Jr. Otto Porter Jr., I'd be surprised if he's, you know, that guy gets injured a lot. Like he's, you know, I don't know how many years he's been in the league now, but he's, um, I'm not expecting much from those three guys. But the fact that Chris Boucher didn't play, I think that's that's probably the biggest. That's, that's the biggest a cause one. for concern. Yeah. Uh, I thought Otto Porter Jr. would get more time. He was in the rotation in Golden State. Like that was, that was a good team. He was getting... 22 minutes a game in Golden State. <sighs> he was mostly injured last year. I just thought I thought he had something left in him, but he might be cooked. <laughs> he might be cooked. <laughs> he might he's be up, cooked. He is up there. Um, okay, let's move on to the rest of the NBA. We're gonna have so after every game, we're gonna try after most games to come on and do a podcast like this have three takeaways each, and then say one thing about the NBA so um, the podcast doesn't run too long. But my takeaway yesterday from the rest of the league is that the Mavs might be a little bit better than I thought they were. I know they were playing the Spurs. They beat the Spurs 126-119. Mm-hmm. But Luka has a new dude to throw the ball to, and that's Derek Lively, the second, absolutely catching lobs down the lane. He's Luca's favorite target right now, and it seemed like they were clicking a little bit. Not just him. Kyrie was hitting shots. It's like, I think I think this is a good little change for Luca having a big guy that actually runs, you know, runs down the lane and catches every lob possible. And Luca was incredible. Luca went 34-13, and 10 or sorry, Ooh. 33, 13 and 10. How was a quick little triple double to start him and Jokic exactly where we thought they would be in terms of their numbers to start the season. Jokic had a triple double as well. Luca, incredible line and Derek lively, uh, 16 points, 10 rebounds. All, I think all nice. 16 came off other than a couple free throws came off of direct, like Luca lobs. Disgusting. He caught one. He literally caught one coming down the lane and like barely touched the rim and his head was like at rim level. Really, really good, good sign for that team. I, I can't, he's, I think he's a rookie, right? I'm not, I'm not hundred percent sure. And then Kyrie went 22, six and two. So Kyrie definitely contributed. Who knows? Grant Williams might've been a good p- pickup. Maybe there's a bit of a shakeup to that team. I think Dallas might be a little bit better than people are thinking. Full season of Kyrie there. They him and Luca get on the same page. They had the off season. People sleep on Kyrie. He's a top, he's a top 10, eh, top 15, 20 player. Absolutely. When he's healthy and he's uh his mind's right, his mind's I think right. he is a top <laughs> 10 to 15 player in the league. He has to be. Before he wears out his welcome. His finishing package at the rim is just unlike any anyone, you it's know. A tight package. Tight, tight finishing package in and around the rim. All right. What's your what's your last take? Around the, the NBA. last take, the best for last. Zion's back. Oof. All this hype about Wemby reminds me of the hype about Zion. People, Zion was the dude. Everyone in the world was excited. Barack Obama was courtside at his college games. Then he's been injury riddled, out of shape, but he looked like an absolute animal last night. He, he was yamming all over guys. He's got the hop back. He. 
put Jaron Jackson Jr. on a poster. Jaron Jackson Jr. on a poster with the right hand, too. We all know he's left-handed. Came up off the right and just banged it on him. It's nice. Just and banged it on him. If he's healthy, this Pelicans team, <sighs> sky's the ceiling. Ceiling so is he, the sky. He dropped 23, three assists, seven boards. So not the, not the wildest line you've ever seen. But, yeah, highlight plays. It seemed like the scoring was distributed. I watched the highlights of that game today. Um, Brandon Ingram, 19 points on, 23. Jonas with a quick 12 and 12. Classic. You know, that's that's a Jonas line if, I ever, if I've ever seen one. 12, 12 points, 12 rebounds. That's Jonas. Herb Jones, Herb. 13, three assists, eight rebounds. Really good defensively. And then CJ McCollum, actually leading scorer of that team, so 24, 24 points. I agree with you, man. If Zion's healthy, he's slamming like that. He feels good. That team can go really far. That's uh, that's a really underrated team if they're all healthy and playing on the same page. People forget how good they were last year at the beginning of the year. The first 20 games or so, they were first or second in the West for a good chunk of it, and then they had injuries and fell apart. But they they could win a playoff round this year. No, absolutely. What did they – 111-104, they beat Memphis. Yeah. Okay. Any other takes? We got to wrap this up. No, but remember to unsubscribe from all other podcasts. We we already told you you don't need to be subscribed to any other Raptors podcasts. We have you covered. Do you want to sign off or should I sign off? You sign off. Thank you so much to everybody who's watching and listening. I really appreciate it. We really appreciate you. Thank you for joining along in this journey of ours. We're gonna try to do this. Very often, hopefully, if Andy's up for it after every Raptors game. Um, and we'll have some hot takes if any news breaks. Thank you so much for watching once again, and hope everyone has a great day. Go, Raps. <laughs>